it's me, Bussy, and welcome back to my channel. There has literally been a firestorm of drama and announcements in the drag world over this past weekend, and honestly, it's been a lot to keep up with. So I figured a little tea roundup video was in order. Today we're going to be covering the Club Kids UK Drag Fest drama, explaining the Cameron Michaels lip sync fiasco, and covering the Drag Race Philippines and Drag Din Conflama. And we've also finally got some Dragula Season 4 news, so stay tuned to the end of the video to hear that. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's go ahead and get started. First up, Drag Fest UK. And for those of you unaware of what this was, let's look at their website. Drag Fest is a music festival which focuses on the love for drag and everybody who loves drag. The event is not a drag convention, this is a live music festival. And I'm just going to quickly speculate that they have explicitly defined themselves as a live music festival and not a drag convention because of the wording that we've seen in drag race contracts. As a reminder, there is an exclusionary clause which says, I agree from the effective date of this agreement until 12 months after the initial broadcast of the last episode of the program in which I appear in, I shall not perform, act, or otherwise appear at any conventions other than RuPaul's Drag Con conventions. So yeah, this drag convention, oops, I mean festival was announced several months ago and included one of the most impressive cast lists I have ever seen. Seriously, they had queens from almost every drag race franchise, including UK, Holland, and US, and a whole bunch of Dragula girls. Honestly, it seemed a little too good to be true, and sure enough, cracks in the festival's casting facade started popping up all over social media, coming from the queens that were supposed to appear themselves. For example, on August 11th, Acid Betty released this announcement across her social media platforms. I had seen promotions in late 2019 with my name on it and had immediately asked why it was included and for it to be removed. Cut to 2021 and my name still lingers on that same flyer. Last month I was told of the offer through a fantastic agency that doesn't even represent me full time and unfortunately I had already booked that weekend for a private event. I am so sorry to anyone who was deceived but I had no contracts and never knew much about the event except flyers that were being reposted via Instagram. Around the same time, Dragula alumni Bitch Pudding posted this on her social medias. So my team has been reaching out since April about Dragfest UK. We never got a response. No contract, no update, nothing. I've sent DMs asking for them to reply, and I was never communicated about any logistics for the event or notified that they were selling a group meet and greet. Pearl posted on Instagram saying, due to many factors, including poor communication, travel issues, and COVID, I will not be appearing at Dragfest this weekend. And Vander Von Odd, another Dragula alumni, posted on their social media saying this, I will no longer be attending Dragfest UK. Days before the event, I still have not received flights, hotel hotels, work visa, or any details regarding the event, performance space, or transportation. And yeah, you heard that right. These famous drag queens were being announced for this festival without actually being contacted or consulted about physically appearing there. And worse yet, Dragfest UK had been selling meet and greet tickets for those same queens. Like, imagine buying a meet and greet specifically for a queen that you wanted to see, only to find out that they didn't even know that they were supposed to be there. The level of unprofessionalism far too much. And following all of these announcements from the queens themselves, the event organizers actually sent out an email to ticket holders saying that more queens would not be attending the festival, including Shea Coulee, Trinity K. Bonet, Miss Cracker, and more. But did clarify that Widow Von Du and Monique Hart had been added to the cast roster. Literally just pure confusion, chaos, and madness across the board. And Bob pretty much summed up my feelings on it by tweeting this. I don't know what's going on with the fest, but it sounds like the fire festival of drag. It was all giving very like Tumblr dash con vibes or like worse, maybe Tanacon vibes. However, now that the event has come and gone, it seems like all the drama leading up to it was maybe a little bit worse sounding than what actually occurred. And a lot of the original roster was in Indeed there, including Queens and the Frock Destroyers, Gothi Kindle, and the Todrick performance did happen. Dragfest UK did post a message on Instagram following the event saying this. Firstly, I need to say a biggest thank you to my incredible team. Secondly, I want to give a personal apology to those artists and performers that were not given correct needed information, etc. in time to be comfortable to perform at Dragfest. Lastly, we would like to ask those commenting, tagging, sharing, and sending abusive messages to please understand how difficult this has been to try and pull off events during this very difficult time. They all also have been advertising full refunds to anybody that purchased a meet and greet to see a queen that ended up not actually being there. So it is nice to see them owning up to their mistakes and publicly acknowledging that they would like to do better in the future. Now let's move on to the boom clap heard around the world. Uh, yeah. Fine. You're not really fine. In the latest episode of Drag Race All-Star Season 6, Raja O'Hara lip-synced for her legacy against Cameron Michaels to Boom Clap. You know, the song by gay rights icon herself, Charles the XCX. Gay rights! 
And look, I love Charlie XCX. I'm a self-declared angel, but I think Denali spoke for all of us when she tweeted this after seeing the lip sync. Trophy, unlock it, room, room. Girl, same. I was like, boom clap in this economy? I could not believe it. Anyways, the lip sync happened and it wasn't amazing, but it happened. And Cameron won. The drama kind of started online though when Raja was accused by fans of throwing the lip sync. She went off on Twitter saying this. No, I didn't throw that lip sync. Some songs we just don't vibe with. And to be honest, I didn't expect to win the challenge, so I wasn't fully prepared. And then out of nowhere, <laughs> literally out of nowhere, Cameron Michaels drops this Instagram post, which is just a black square and like three pages of monologue. The longer I try to act like it never happened, the longer it's going to take me to get over it. I am hurt, disgusted, and devastated by the entire situation. Call me dramatic, I don't give a fuck. Every girl looks forward to coming back and having their moment to shine. I feel cheated. And worst of all, I said yes and agreed to it, which is something I have to deal with now and will take me a very long time to get over. If I could go back in time, I never would have stepped foot on that stage. I know my worth and my talent and I feel like I was used for some quick cheap storyline. I am a performer through and through so to have the one thing I'm actually good at to be tainted like this hurts my heart so much and fuck that stupid song. Girl. <laughs> Girl. I mean honestly the episode didn't really have any drama so at least she gave us something to talk about. She also posted this on her Instagram story following that original message. And to everyone texting me that I'm not answering, I don't need dozens of messages asking me if I'm okay. Please respect that. Thank you. Again, I'm just like sitting here confused as hell because at worst it was a mediocre lip sync and she won. But in her defense, I think it's important to note there's two different things I think she was upset about here. Firstly, I think she was upset about having to send home Eureka, her season 10 drag queen bestie. And secondly, she seemed to be most upset that she was showcased on the show not performing to the best of her abilities. She's known for doing all kinds of flips, kicks, and splits during her lip syncs, and we really didn't see any of that from her, except in the Untucked episode, where they showed a clip of the lip sync that was edited out from the main episode, where she kind of slipped on the landing of a cartwheel. But she regained her balance, and like, in my opinion, that is still pretty impressive. And around all the same time of Cameron posting this stuff about her lip sync, Dita Ritz went off on Twitter saying this, I wanna be messy as fuck right now, but instead I'm going to bed. Good night to all. I wish Ungrateful Queens would be thankful for their blessing and opportunities. Presumably this was about Cameron, but we don't know that for sure. But it's no secret that Dita Ritz has been tagging World of Wonder on Twitter and Instagram asking them why she hasn't had her turn as a returning all-star or lip sync assassin. Which honestly kind of upsets me too, because I would love to see Dita do either of those. Remember when she gave maybe one of the top three lip sync performances of all time back on her season? Anyways, Cameron continued to address this online and even posted a meme about it. My fall plans the Delta variant, and then finally deleted her original post and posted some videos on her Instagram stories saying this. Look, I know that that was probably a little dramatic. I'm not going to apologize for it. That's exactly how I feel. I think I am more ashamed and embarrassed than anything. And that may seem so dramatic to some people, but I take pride in what I do and that's what I do best. And for that to be out into the world now, it's just very embarrassing for me. So that's that. But let me know what y'all think. Would you be mad if you were in her heels? Was the song really to blame? How would you feel about eliminating your best friend on Drag Race? And next, what we have all been waiting for, another <laughs> Drag Race franchise announcement. This time for the Philippines. But this was really interesting timing considering Manila Luzon literally just announced her Dragged In casting yesterday on August 15th on Instagram. Which, if you're unfamiliar, is going to be a drag-based competition reality show similar to Drag Race but hosted by Manila herself. Hi, I'm Manila from Dragged In, Philippines. We're hiring Pinoy drag queens for Dragged In, Philippines. And shortly after the Drag Race announcement, Manila tweeted this. This is major. The Philippines is going to have two drag reality shows on TV. So it does seem like she's excited about it. And ultimately, it is going to be a net positive to have more drag representation on TV in the Philippines. They say there's no coincidences, but let me know what y'all think. Was this timing a little too perfect? Is Drag Race trying to steal Manila's thunder? Or do you think these two drag shows can coexist in harmony? And if that wasn't enough drag for you, Dragula has just announced that season four will be premiering on October 9th. 19th as an AMC Shutter original. They haven't announced a cast yet or anything, but we do know that 
saint is going to be on the show because she won the resurrection pageant and that was part of her prize. And that's all I've got for you today, but I'm sure there's going to be another five drag race competition announcements in the next week, so stay tuned. <laughs> As always, I wanna say thank you for watching this video and give a special shout out to April of Adams, Aiden Smith, Allison Lux, Anna Miriam, Anthony, August Everywhere, B-Rolls, Bradley, Brett, Cameron, Kathy, Cherry Poppins, Christopher, Claire Moosedale, Darmisha, Delani, Deutsche Leather, Devin, Dr. Martin, Evan, Flo, Fractalize, GJ Bearclaw, Got the Morbs, Jay Isaacs, JJ Bailey, James, Jenny, Jesse, Johnny, Giovanni, Kevin, Kiki, and John, Lisa Lang, Madam Muffy, Millennial Hissy Fit, Nathan, Nick O, Nuva Ringwald, Popo, Pasquale Nava, Poteen Levine, Randy Candy, Ron, Shannon, Shazzy, Sky, Sultan, Tammy, Tony, Travis, Tyler, Vendetta, and Wheelie, who were all supporting me at my hottest here. And Ali Al, Angel, Caroline, Cyrus, Felicia, Goaty P, JB, Joseph, Josh, JP in Dallas, Laura, Nurse, Luca, Matthew, Maxi LaWow, Robert Reeves, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, and Triton, who were all supporting me at my Bussy Green Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye.